Herbs Magazine is now calling plant-based travelers mainstream. Let's find out from our guest Lisa how a small group of thoughtful, committed people are changing the cruising world. This may be an option for your travel in the future. We are excited today to have with us Lisa McCarl because she's going to help us when it comes to travel. I want you to meet Lisa. Oh my gosh, she is so special. You know, she's a nurse, but she retired. She had a master's, in, she has a master's in nursing and health policy. She's a retired open heart surgeon nurse in the recovery room. Um, she's been a travel agent for 20 years. So who better to learn from than a travel agent? She's certified in Certified Travel Agent, CTA. She's also a Travel Institute and Elite Cruise Counselor, and the Cruise Line International Association has certified her. So she and her husband are lifetime members of National Health Association, which we're going to hear more about. And um, they've been plant-based for, gosh, more than 10 years and it just works really well with her passion for wellness to also be a travel agent because she helps those of us in the National Health Association group. Um, Lisa, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to be here, Kathy. This is quite a professional journey from nurse to travel agent. How in the world did that happen? Well, and I was I was blessed to be a mother. Oh all during that time and in between. And so when I actually left nursing, um, it was to help uh, be a full-time mom. And I worked part-time for years and then was able to be a full-time mom for a while. And when it was time to go back to work, uh, I told my husband I was ready to go back to hospital administration. And he said, but we'll never get to travel. So I've always loved taking classes. I've taken, we have a local college and I, have taken classes much of my life. And so I went back and took some travel classes and really enjoyed it and had uh, started my business right away. And uh, it has now evolved to at least half of my business is plant-based travel. I take that for granted. Well, um, now you've gotten so skilled at being a travel agent since the day you took that college class Thank you. <laughs> and I have seen personally what you're able to do because um, you're helping me with the trip as well yes we're and, delighted to have you join us oh I mean it's just so exciting to, to talk with you and find out new things every time we talk and so that's why we're zooming today is because I know you can be helpful to our group too who as you said to me earlier um, you said I knew people would do this if it was easier to do. And I think that seems to be your mantra, doesn't it, To with your travel? How can you help people do that? And where have you had the most success in making it easiest to, you know, easy to do for people? And that's been in uh, cruise ships. Now, I will say I love the water. I grew up on the water. I taught sailing as a teenager, and I've always enjoyed the water. Um, I much prefer small ship cruising uh, for just to stay away from crowds, but also for sustainability. And I had I've done a lot of cruising and I've done more cruises than I can admit uh, that they haven't been able to manage a whole food plant based diet without added salt, oil or sugar. But my first cruise with Windstar, it was very obvious that they were up to the challenge and willing to try. And it was so refreshing. And they, uh, we started simple. I just said, you know, we like lots of steamed vegetables and lots of raw vegetables and um, salads, abundant salads with as many ingredients as you can find. And so they started delivering and they brought baked potatoes, uh, baked sweet potatoes out the pole, which you never get on a cruise ship. Everybody wants to be very fancy. And so when we started, they would do a, a table service and they would just bring all kinds of fabulous vegetables and fruits and grains, whole grains. And so 
once we saw that, and then they started uh, cooking entrees and they were able to su be successful in having a nice flavor profile. Um, so we then did three or four very small groups. We took um, Tammy and Tom Kramer with a couple of other plant-based friends and we uh, went to the Greek Isles and we went to the Caribbean and I had a couple of other plant-based friends and we worked with the chefs there. And then we uh, really started our first group with Windstar, large, well, 20 person group was to the Baja Peninsula and Sea of Cortez. And it was, um, they did a nice job. And then we had a hundred to Alaska in August of 2022, and they did a phenomenal job. And you have pictures of that, Kathy. Um, they, the salad bars were immense. And the way that, the way that I got the ideas and um, I, I need to say that I'm, I partner with Wanda Huberman at the National Health Association. And I'll also tell you that for the first five years of being plant-based, we went to lots of educational seminars. I never told anybody I was a travel agent because it, I just dreaded the thought of trying to help people travel and with the requirements of the food that we're requesting. And so when I went to my first NHA conference, Wanda had 300 people and a buffet that was just exquisite. And it I call it the Switzerland of buffets because it has um, everything labeled and it had um, G-bombs for people following Dr. Furman. It had uh, lots of potatoes for the McDougal crowd. It labeled nuts and had low fat items for the Esselstyn group. Um, and then certainly Dr. Clapper and Dr. Greger, they all, uh, it, every doctor was pleased with the buffet and, and as was I. And so once I saw that, I went up to her and I said, well, I'm a travel agent and I think I might be able to, if you can do this in a hotel, you should be able to do this on a cruise ship. So I really, we had our real breakthrough when Wanda Huberman came and helped. Mm -hmm. And she's the executive director of the National Health Association. And, and this organization that, that kind of made it all go together, what, tell us about it, because I didn't know about it until last year. And it sounds like, a, I mean, it is a really special group. Yes, yes, it's a fabulous group. It's a nonprofit organization and they just had their 75th annual conference. Uh, they are beautifully run. They are expanding in their missions. They have podcasts. They have a fabulous magazine that comes out quarterly. And now they're doing lots and lots of plant-based travel on small sustainable ships. We did just have a group in the Galapagos Islands on a Lindblad expedition. There were about a hundred of us and that was completely plant-based without added salt, oil, or sugar. Um, so I've been thrilled with my association with the National Health Association and WANDA. And um, I highly recommend joining. It's a, a basic membership is only $35 a year and you get a fabulous magazine four times a year. So I don't know that you could purchase a, 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 a magazine with scientific articles about plant-based living for that price. So I'm not even sure how they do that. Uh, but they also have fabulous podcasts. Yeah. I and I they get a new they have a newsletter too. Yes. Yes. That's well done too. And it's not the same content that's in the magazine. So that the newsletter is free. So I'll put that information in um, the show more section of this video. So if you're interested, you can join the National Health Association too. Okay. So you you took on the challenge. If we can do this in a hotel, we can do this on a cruise ship. And you did it with small groups and then the Galapagos group. But now you're doing it with Windstar. And um, I was reading the article that was in the Forbes magazine recently. It said, vegan vacations, how plant-based travelers are going mainstream in 2023. And they were quoting you 
and um, they, you were talking about the, cow, the cauliflower tandoora and the, I mean, these chefs sound like they're just doing, bending over backwards to provide outstanding meals. Tell us about that. They are. They're very creative and we have a wide range of diversity. So one of the exciting things, there, there are several companies that I have worked with and WinStar is certainly the one where we've found a niche and we're doing a lot of groups in the future. Um, they started out with a 10 day meal cycle and they, they showed it to Wanda and me. And we looked at it and we asked about ingredients. We talked to the chefs about uh, reading labels. And Wanda has done a fabulous job with that. On our first cruise, she was actually in the kitchen teaching them how to make green smoothies. So uh, she has been very hands-on and they've been just incredibly receptive. And our uh, Tahiti trip, we one of the things, the reasons that Windstar, I believe, has uh, become so involved is our groups sell out very quickly. And so we had this Alaska group. We started in January of 2021 when no one was booking travel, no one was booking cruise travel. And I thought, well, Wanda said, let's open this up and, and start to look towards the future. Let's plan something for August of 2022. Mm -hmm. We started offering it to the NHA members in January of 2021 when cruise was very slow. With travel was, you know, the cruising was shut down and travel was essentially shut down as well. And we sold 120 spots in a month and a half. So when start, we got their attention, we broke records. They actually, the first day, I think we booked about 30 people. And so the, then the second day we continued at that pace. And then they said, we're going to stay open this weekend and we'll, we'll just for you. And let's see how many people. And then finally they stopped us and said, okay, now we have to stop and make sure we can manage this size group. It's the largest in Windstar's history. And it went beautifully. So um, it was everything we hoped for really. And more. And I, uh, they just have continued to do a fabulous job. After that, because they wanted to make sure they could meet very, very high standards, they asked us to limit our groups to 50 people. The ships hold 312 guests. So they, uh, with 50 people, they'd still bring extra chefs and we can have an area where we can dine privately or people can dine in the main dining room off of a, a, a menu. So um, it's gone very well. And then Tahiti happened. And so we, they made it, the cruise industry has been talking about how they are going to need to increase prices. And this is just the cruise industry as a whole because of the increased prices of food and fuel. And so um, when the 2025 groups became available, I, worked with Wanda and we determined a date that we, we wanted to do the first Tahiti cruise that was available in 2025. And so we started a group and we sold 50 in a week and a half. And so we were completely booked at that point. And Dr. Furman signed up to join us. And he said, Lisa, we can sell this out. You realize we can sell this out. And so I <laughs> I reminded him that I am a solo travel agency. And um, he said, okay, well, I'm gonna provide support for you. And I'm gonna send an email to my, to my mailing list and we will invite people. And he was absolutely correct. We sold out the Tahiti ship um, of 312 people. So it's very exciting. We have a wait list uh, because there were a few people who booked from online without realizing it was going to become a plant-based, exclusively plant-based cruise. So we do expect some cancellations and um, from people once they find out there's no meat on the ship. Uh, so that's, so we have a lot of exciting cruises lined up. Well, I, th I think it's gone mainstream. <laughs> <laughs>
And that was a surprise that. when they said, and somebody would like to interview you. <laughs> so, Well, you know, tell me, I was list, looking at the list of things. I mean, chickpea omelets, yes. uh, vegetable cur curries, black bean quesadillas, Mediterranean wraps. What, what? What does what do the meals look like? I think you put some on your Facebook page. We'll include in the yes, list. yes, and I did make that public. I'm on Facebook as Lisa Smith McCarl, and I took lots of pictures of meals from our uh, Windstar trip. And then we also have a National Health Association Whole Food Plant Based Travel Facebook group. And that's a private group, so that's by invitation. But if you friend me and ask to be invited, I can certainly invite you. Um, and we have, I think, uh, 2,700 people who are following our plant-based Facebook group, our, our whole food plant-based travel group. Mm -hmm. So we do include, I have pictures of the ships. We have pictures of the meals. We had absolutely beautiful meals on our Galapagos trip with Lindblad Expeditions, and their director of hotel operations is plant-based. Um, so she did just a fabulous job. And then uh, last month, I traveled with Ama Waterways, a river cruise company, and I'm working with the senior vice president and co-founder, and she is ready. They're very ready for our plant-based meals. We just have to find a time to establish a group with with Ama Waterways and we'll start small just like we have with other other companies and then grow grow our cruises so um it's just very busy and people are ready to travel and even uh non-plant piece people are enjoying the meals that they're preparing for us yeah the article spoke to that too that was very interesting um now you found the most success with cruise ships and getting your meals that way. It's, it's, you've had some of the same challenges we've had in terms of consistency when it mean when we go to the restaurants, haven't you? I mean, that's yeah. just at home or wherever we're traveling. Exactly. I have not had great success establishing great consistent meals in even local restaurants. And so we eat home most of the time. But uh, one of the things I did find a caterer who was willing uh, and excited about the menus that I brought to her and the recipes. And so she prepares a weekly, um, we have a rotating menu. And so we have this week, we have a very hearty vegetable soup with all kinds of greens, grains, and beans, and um, vegetables, of course. And then we have uh, AJ's Chipotle black bean burgers, and we have uh, Kathy Fisher's potato salad. So I just watch the recipes, you know, every now and then I'll see, oh, there's a recipe I need to give to the caterer. And she is excited, and there are other people who order she sends out an email weekly and uh, she has her regular dinner club, which is sad, but, um, but then she has whole food plant-based and she, she's very honest, uh, limited salt, oil, sugar. Some of the ingredients she has, has a little bit of salt. So she wants to be completely forthcoming that it isn't completely devoid, devoid of salt. We've, I notice it when I have salt on a cruise ship or, um, I have not ever noticed salt in her food. Mm -hmm. Well, how wonderful for her because you've given her skill to expand her business, haven't you? She was, she's fabulous and she was very ready. It's April's Table Catering in Saverna Park, Maryland. I'll be darned. Well, um, we have one member from South Carolina and she was telling me about this last year because she for special occasions, she she hires a caterer, this woman that she's worked with. Yes. And that works out nice, too. Um, so that's an option, you know. And you said someone suggested, who was it? Doug Lyle suggested finding a college student. And Yes, that was one of the, in the uh, when we first became plant based, we got to every immersion we could find and went to lots of plant based conferences and heard some just fabulous plant-based icons, and they talked about make it easy for yourself. 
And so I fully believe, you know, it just depends. Not everybody has a job where they're working more than 40 hours a week. Mm -hmm. uh, some people actually really enjoy the food prep process. Mm -hmm. So I, I also use leaf sides. Uh, we use them at home sometimes, but always when we travel. So you had mentioned, Lisa, uh, to me about LeafSide. Can you explain what LeafSide is? Um, is it a company online or what? And how does that work into your plan? Yes, LeafSide is an online company. It's endorsed by Dr. Greger and Dr. Alan Goldhammer. And they offer plant-based meals that are freeze-dried. And so you can add two cups of water and uh, stir and cover it for 10 minutes and they recommend a certain type of bowl that can come with it. They have a stainless steel bowl that you can purchase on Amazon. And then we have collapsible silicone bowls as well that we use for travel. For example, we'll take them on an airplane. I've been uh, very discouraged with the airplane meals in the last several months, really since travel restarted a lot of airlines have dropped vegan meals. And even though we request the vegan meals, we don't often get them anymore. So Clayton and I always take uh, salads on board. We, we take contain, well, I take a suitcase full of food and I'll take frozen quarts to serve as my ice. And so we'll, I freeze hummus and I'll put that in my suitcase. And then we take, um, raw veggies and fruits, and we'll take, sometimes we'll make a veggie sandwich because we don't have any challenges with gluten that we know of. And, um, and then we take leaf side. So we can, we can manage a 10 hour flight well. <laughs> Amazing. That, and the traveling you're doing, you need to be able to do that. So leaf side is a company online and I'll put that information down in the uh, show more as well. And you, but now you don't do just leaf side. I think you were telling me about how you handle breakfast too. Oh, we do. We take uh, organic rolled oats in a baggie and uh, we mix it with cinnamon. And then we'll take the, um, the West Bray soy milk. I think I'm getting the brand correct, but that's just soy and water. And so we use that one for travel, but a lot of people will use an unsweetened almond milk as well. And we then either take fruit or purchase fruit where we're traveling. And so we've got a great bowl of raw oats and we mix it with the, the soy milk or the almond milk and then add lots and lots of berries. And so that at least gets us started in our hotel room. And so you... You do, like you said, take another suitcase that's full yeah. of food, and that includes your oatmeal, and that, and you can put that uh, soy milk in there. So, well, we put the soy milk in. A, we put the box in a baggie just in case. We've never had one explode, but just in case, and that goes in with our clothing that we check. We can't. We do the. Uh, we do. We put our food in a like a Whole Foods cooler bag. It is, it fits nicely inside a rollerboard suitcase. Mm -hmm. And so we, that's what we fill. And then we'll, outside of that bag, we'll put our apples and any kind of fruit we're taking. Okay, okay, good. That sounds like a good plan. But okay. I will warn you, you cannot bring this food back into the US. Okay. because they have dogs sniffing. So Eve, my husband, we thought we had disposed of everything or eaten everything. And he had an apple somewhere deep in his backpack and a dog came right up to him in JFK. And we were pulled aside to agriculture. <laughs> and, and they took the apple and sent us along our way. But it um, another time we uh, asked the airline to throw away uh, some food we hadn't finished and they said no we can't throw we can't dispose of that and so we were too late you have to give it to the flight attendants on their last lap through so we naively thought oh well they'll be so happy that we're voluntarily taking our food to throw away but no back to agriculture and so yes so now they just scan our suitcases they want to know what we're bringing in yeah yeah 
Oh, that's we did cool. get Leaf Side through. We have successfully every time, but they did really take a close look at it last time. They pulled it out of the suitcase, they read the ingredients, and then agriculture stamped it as okay. And then we had to go back through security and the uh, the guy who x-rayed the bag wanted to take it out and look at it. So taking leaf side with you is not a problem, but you need to eat it on the trip and not bring it back. Well, so far we've gotten it back in with us, anything that is left over, but uh, they're getting very strict uh, mm. about looking and may just be with us since our mishap with the apple that one time. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Well, are there any other resources, you know, that if we're traveling, not with the cruise line that, that you've been working with? And by the way, because I'm going on one of their cruises, Windstar Cruises, we did get an announcement, I believe, that said that anybody, whether you were with your group or not, am I correct on that, can have whole food plant-based? Well, I would say yes. However, if our dining room fills, it will be just our group. So we encourage people to join the group rather than book on their own because we have access to these huge diverse buffets and those are privately for our group. But people anyone who wants if someone wants to go on a different date they can't go on one of our trips and they want to experience that itinerary yes i can help them i can help book them and i can notify the hotel operations team that they they're going to be there and we'll get the chef on the ship ready to go um and people just can also just show up and um they do have that menu there Oh, fantastic. Well, thank you for making that possible. That's yes. really wonderful because you're well, in Wanda was a huge part of that. Oh, Wanda Huberman, so. That's great. Um, so are there any other resources that you might want to recommend to us uh, to help with travel and being able, to, like you said, make it as easy as possible so we can do our diet when we travel? Yes. Well, we have Dr. Furman Bars. So and he has some good foods on his uh, website. And then we're trying the well-being bars again. Uh, so I'd say just try different things. Everybody has very individual tastes and preferences. So um, take your food with you <laughs> as much as you can, because it, it can be difficult. There's also some fabulous restaurants. And, and we have a restaurant right in Virginia, Green Fair, that is all organic whole food plant-based SOS free. We we just love it. Did you find that on Happy Cow? I'm sure it's on Happy Cow, but I found it. Um, I met Gwen Whitaker a long time ago and was just so excited with what, what she's done. And she also sponsors the uh, Fairfax, Virginia Veg Fest, so, which was fabulous. Yeah, I've heard about that restaurant. It sounds wonderful. Yeah. Oh, it's great. It's worth the trip. So um, knowing from our experience, we've we found Happy Cow in foreign countries has been really good as a place to start. So Great. anyway, they, they do have a list. Of, you know, people do recommend lots of them. But I found that vegan, quote, vegan restaurants are a little bit challenging when it comes to eating whole food plant based. Is that what you found, too? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. They rely heavily on their oil and salt and um there are some restaurants that will have a few uh menu items that are not sos free and, and basically you can also take those um boxes of beans chef aj travels with those she just takes the little cardboard boxes of beans and sometimes she'll open them on a plane and eat them mm -hmm. uh, so you but you also can take them and mix them in a salad Mm -hmm. Yeah, we get it done one way or the other, don't we? Exactly. <laughs> okay, is there anything else you want to share with us before we sign off? No, thank you very much for this opportunity. And I, I'm super excited to travel with you. And we uh, do look at our NHA plant-based travel website. It's um, 
healthscience.org. And if you go to events and drop down, you'll see plant-based travel. And then also our uh, plant-based travel Facebook page. Right. And we'll put all the resources you've talked about in the show more section too. So look for those. Um, thank you. Lisa, thank you so much and happy traveling. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you.